All right. So today we're going to talk about plugin presets in Pro Tools, which is a lot of alliteration that I didn't mean to put together, but that's really the best way to say it. So here we are. There are a couple of things to keep in mind uh, as we go through this. So one is that there are kind of like two hierarchies here. So there are presets and there's the preset menu that is you know, DAW specific, that that's part of Pro Tools. And then there are preset menus within plugins themselves. So sometimes we have both options, you know? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a plugin here. Maybe I'll open up like a fab filter or something because everyone loves fab filter. Oh, and before I get started, this video idea actually came from a Patreon patron from a comment from a Patreon patron. So, um, you know, if you feel so inclined, check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash noise. And sometimes things that we talk about on the Discord server or elsewhere um, find their way into a video. So, all right. So let's start with that uh, Pro Tools level of presets. So let me click on this to so I can open up another one. I'm going to actually open up a couple plugins because... Um, I'm, I go too hard sometimes. So this is the default plugin for EQ in Pro Tools. This is the one that's been around forever. Um, and you'll see that this has the same options that um, this one has at the top here. So there's the preset menu right here, preset menu right here. Um, you'll see this. This is the Pro Tools level of um, preset menu, if that makes sense. That's probably not a good way to word that. But um, what you can do is let's say I'm messing with this plugin and I make lots of very extreme changes and I'm like, I love that. What I can do is I can click on this preset menu and I can save my preset. So um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you're clicking around and you open up an existing preset and you then modify it, and you're like, okay, this is great. I love it. Um, what you want to do is you don't want to just save the settings. So if you're not careful and you just hit save settings, it'll overwrite an existing preset. So that's great if you want to do that. But just keep in mind, if you're trying to make a brand new preset, do not choose save settings. You want to do save settings as, and then you can name it. And then I'll save it, and it'll be in this folder on my system. So that's another thing to keep in mind with plugin presets. What they do is they actually save a file on, like in a folder on your system, and you can then send that file and share it with others. You can import other people's presets if they send them to you. It's just like another type of, it's, it's another file type that you uh, maintain on your computer. You just have to tell, you know, put the preset in the proper folder for the plugin you're using and sometimes rescan the preset folder. Um, but that's, that's basically how it works. It's pretty simple. So it's really easy to share presets with friends if you want to share presets with other people. So along the same thought that we were just talking about a moment ago, if I then decide I want to dial this back and make it a little less extreme, and then I want to save it, right? I might want to update this crazy low shelf preset. I can just hit save settings, and now it's updated my crazy low shelf preset. So that's kind of the use case for uh, save settings versus save settings as. And similarly, I open this up, so <laughs> I guess I should use it, right? You can do the same thing with this plug in here. So the point here is to show you that there's, you know, you can use this on uh, multiple different types of plugins. This is not fab filter specific. I'll actually close this. And then what I want to do is I'm going to hold option or alt if you're on a Windows to duplicate this plugin over here. And I'm going to actually like clear this, put it on a different setting, right? So let's say I want to suddenly get this preset onto this one. And I don't want to just like choose my crazy low shelf, which is something I could do. I could just go through and, um, you know, choose my preset. I can go to Kato default. I can go to crazy low shelf. But um, let me go back to Kato default. Um, there is one way that you can copy presets over. So you can go to the preset menu, copy settings. You can go over here. And then on the new plugin, the, the different one, right, you can paste the settings. Um, I personally never do that. Um, it's great that they have that as an option, but what you can do is if you want these same exact settings, you can just hold option from the one that you want and click and drag and place it over the one that you want to replace and just click replace. And that's how I tend to do it. So like here, let me make it visual so you can see it right here. I'm on a different one. If I want to copy this one over, I just go to that one, hold option or alt if you're on Windows and hit replace. And there you go. And I find that to be easier than copying and pasting the preset. 
But I also think it's good to know that copying and pasting the preset is an option. Another thing to keep in mind that's kind of handy is let's say I make this preset and it was crazy and it is intense and it's something where I'm like, like, I'm probably never going to use this preset again. I'm probably only going to use it for this one project and then never going to use it again. What I might do there is go save settings as and instead of putting it in my pro Q folder in my presets folder for the plugin, you know, whatever plugin it is, um, I might then go and find the session folder on my computer and save it into the session folder specifically. So it's saved with the session and not cluttering up my system later. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that we have these presets within specific plugins, right? So some plugins will have their own set of presets, their own preset menu like this one has, right? So this one has a preset menu right here, and I can go through the presets here as well as saving presets with my system end uh, menu. So um, a cool thing about like this one, for example, with FabFilter is I think the default um, was something, oh, here. Here's the default, right? So the default's like this with zero latency, no dots or anything. And what I used to do is I used to click this till I got to seven, then I'd have a bunch of dots I can drag around. You can always add a dot too. It's not like hard to do, but um, I would do that as a starting point and then I would swap this to natural phase. And at some point I realized I was spending a lot of time doing that and I was doing the same thing almost every single time. And so what I figured out, let me go back to the default. So what you can do is you can actually change the user default. So whenever I open this plugin, for example, if I close this one out and I create a new one, it will open up not like this system default, right? Like the original default, but it'll open up as my default, which is with the seven bands and the natural phase. So the way I did that is I went to my starting point that I wanted just manually like that. And then I click down here and I go to options and I can just uh, save as default here. And then that became my user default. You can also, on the preset menu for any plugin, you can do that by setting as user default here. So I found that to be very useful and a huge time saver, I think, over a long period of time, right? It adds up. Now, I know I wanted to talk about like exporting and sharing presets, but I think we kind of already talked about that, right? And so the other side of that that I wanted to mention is that you can then easily import uh, plugin presets from external sources. So like a lot of times companies will give away preset packs, stuff like that. Um, all you have to do is figure out like where the preset is stored on your computer for your plugin, right? So ProQ3, for example, is here. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out if you go to like save a preset, you know, save settings as, you can see where, where it goes, right? Um, and then you can just drop that preset in that folder and import it from there. And the other thing about this is, for example, if I go to save a preset, it'll let me save here. It'll let me save in like the plugin, plugin settings, I believe is what it's called, folder in your Pro Tools session. Um, but if you try to go somewhere random on your computer, it might not let you. So like if I try to save to the desktop, I think it won't let me. Yeah. So here it's not letting me do that. Um, so you just save it into the folder and then, you know, you can transfer it, you know, transfer it from that folder to, you know, your friend or to a thumb drive or what have you. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. And it's just trying to help you stay organized and not have like plug plugin settings all over your computer in random places. And I think that's kind of it. That's everything I wanted to talk about today. There are also, you know, presets for instrument plugins. For example, Serum has a ton of presets that you can go out and find online on places like Splice, stuff like that. Um, and it's a similar process, right? You go and you, I think the menu's up here. Actually, let me open it. I'll show you. Um, which is me opening random plugins today. So let's see. Serum. So here's where our presets are, right? So we have a bunch of different options here. We have like my splice ones. We have the ones that came with Serum. And then we have like the user ones. We have our menu here where we can like load presets. We can rescan for presets, stuff like that. So um, it's very similar, right? And oftentimes it's kind of in a similar spot for some reason. But um, that's about it. That's about everything I wanted to talk about today. So this topic probably could have a ton more detail here. You know, each plugin has its own set of uh, presets and menus and stuff like that. And then we have the DAW specific one. Um, so if there's anything that I missed that you find to be very valuable and useful, please let me know in the comments below because I am always looking to um, like beef up, beef up my understanding of this stuff. So I would really appreciate it. And 
other than that, you know, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I appreciate all that stuff. I hope some of this was useful to you. Some of this was helpful. And I have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. That's the one that I mentioned earlier. Um, most of what I've been focusing on lately with that is the Discord server. And that's been a lot of fun. Uh, we've been sharing information and nerding out and stuff on there. So please Join that if you feel so inclined. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. I don't know. What should I talk about? I um, Oh, I recorded a lap steel guitar yesterday. And that was a lot of fun um, with a client session. Uh, I love how those can sound. They're so much fun. And they're so cool. And it's unique. And it's a treat. And it's a lot of fun. I shared uh, I shared a video of it on my Instagram story. But um, I didn't have the audio in there because I don't want to, like, release anyone's audio that's not released yet, you know. But, um, yeah, it might find its way into a Instagram reel or something, too. But uh, that was a lot of fun. And then what else? I don't know. What else is new? I am speaking at a conference next week. So right now it's Thursday and I'm speaking at a conference next Saturday, not this coming Saturday. And I'm going to be talking about um, assessment standards with music technology in the classroom. So um, that's at USC Thornton. And I just had an article that was published about mic modeling as an educational tool. Um, I posted online about that. If you go to my social media, you'll see links to it. Um, it's at Kato Noise on Instagram. That's kind of where I'm the most active besides here on YouTube. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I don't know. I've just been doing stuff. I hope you're all doing well, too. Let me know what's been exciting in your life. I, I'm kind of hoping to slow down a little bit now that I graduated grad school. Um, even if it's just temporarily a little bit, you know, do like a normal nine to five, that'd be really nice. <laughs> or something like equivalent to a normal nine to, nine to five instead of uh, like 12 or 14 hours a day, which is what I feel like I've been doing for years now at this point. Because um, I have, but yeah, I don't know. Okay, I think I'm rambling now. So I'll talk to you all later. Thank you. Bye.